Greetings and welcome to Hooked for Life with Mary Beth Temple. In this video, we're going to make this cool market bag. Now it looks like I have done it in the round, but I have not. It is actually made in the corner to corner stitch in double crochet in four separate panels, which are sewed together to give me this super sturdy boxy bottom. And then these stripes sort of met up. I didn't even do that on purpose. They sort of uh, met up when I sewed the panels together. And then it has this nice top with the pointed areas that reach into the straps. And this is made out of uh, worsted weight. This is a cotton poly blend, but you can use any kind of worsted weight cotton. As always, the full pattern is on the blog, so check that out in the link below. Let's jump right in to making our corner to corner panels. All right, we're going to use worsted weight cotton, or in this case, a cotton blend, which is 85 cotton, 15 polyester. This is Big Twist from Joanne Fabrics, but you can use any kind of cotton yarn that you want. We're going to use a dark denim, a light denim, and this peach for a pop of color. And I'm using a four and a half millimeter hook, which is rated a little small for this yarn, but I want a nice tight stitch because of course when I put all my goodies in my market bag, it's going to stretch out. So you want a tight, firm fabric. Let's jump right into the corner to corner. Here is a piece I already have in progress. And so corner to corner is worked in blocks and you can see they face two different ways depending on which way you're headed in your row. And your row is worked in the diagonal. So we're going to start with an increase section. So we're going to start with one block. Then we're going to have two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we're going to continue working even, which means we're always going to want seven blocks. But in order to accomplish that, we're going to have an increase on one side and a decrease on the other side. We're going to do our color changes, etc., etc., etc. And you can see right here what I was talking about, about the row being on the diagonal. Then when I get to the point in the pattern where I've worked enough rows even, I'm going to do a decrease section and that is going to square this side off. So let's start at the very beginning with our very first block. For this piece or for any other corner corner to piece that you're working on, it doesn't matter how big it's going to get. You're always going to start with chain six. So that's three, four, five, six. Now, the next thing you're going to do is put a double crochet in the fourth chain from hook and then a double crochet in each of the two remaining chains. Now, if you've been following this channel for a while, you know that I always like to work in the back or the bump of the chain because I think it leaves a neater edge with a little more elasticity and keeps the work from drawing in. If you want to work in the front or the V because that's how you like to do it, that's okay too. But if you're just learning, I highly recommend you get in the habit of working in the back or the bump. So here is my last double crochet. So all of these blocks in this piece have four stitches. We have our chain three that takes the place of a double crochet and three technical doubles. So every block in this piece, and again, in most corner corner pieces, I don't want to say all because I hate to say all. You never know when somebody's going to prove me wrong. But um, in for the purposes of this piece especially, every single block is going to have four double crochet. One is that chain three and three technical double crochets. So there's row one. There's my first block. We're all ready to move on. So for our second row, remember we're in an increase section. We're going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And once again, we're going to double crochet in the fourth chain from hook. That's one, two, three, four. And once again, I'm working in the back bump because that's how I like to do it. And then we're going to double crochet in each of the two remaining chains. One, two, and there's my block of four. One, two, three, 
four. Now this is the only tricky part of this and once you get the hang of this the rest of it is easy. The instructions will tell you to skip three double crochets so that's the one that you're near and the next two that's the three technical doubles and put a slip stitch between the third double crochet from hook and that chain three. So we're going in here. Now for some people write the pattern and call that a space. In my mind it's not a space because I, I haven't created a space. To me a space has a chain on top of it or below it or both. So I'm not calling that a space. It is the space between those two stitches but it's not technically a space. I know that's really fiddly but that's how when I write it it's between the third double crochet from hook and that chain three. So there's my slip stitch. Now I'm going to chain three. One, two, three and I'm going to put three double crochets around the post of that chain three. So I'm putting them in the same area where that slip stitch went. Two, three. So row two is complete and I have two blocks, one here and one here and you'll notice they're facing in a different direction. So that first block that I made at this point you can see those double crochets are going from side to side uh, but the two blocks that I just made the double crochets are going up and down. So now I have one more increase row. So I'm going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this is what we did the last time. We're going to go ahead and put a double crochet in the fourth chain from hook. One, two, three, four. double crochet in each of the two remaining chains. There's one, and there's two, then we're going to slip stitch, skip those three double crochets, one, two, three, slip stitch between the third double crochet from hook and that chain three. So this is what we did the last time. There's just more of it. <laughs> chain three, one, two, three. Three double crochets around the post of that chain three. One, two, three, now this is the first time we've had one of these middle blocks. So I've got my four double crochets in there. Remember I've got my chain three and three technical doubles. I'm going to go to the next. I'm going to skip the next three double crochet. One, two, three. Put my hook in the area between the last technical double and the chain three with a slip stitch. Chain three. One, two, three and then three doubles around the post of that same chain three. Now this is all there is to the increase section. So you're going to repeat this and we don't have it for this purse. We do not have a color change in here. So you're going to do an increase which is that chain six, double crochet in the fourth chain from hook and in each of the next two. You'll have turned your work. You're going to slip stitch here, chain three, three doubles, slip stitch here, chain three, three doubles, slip stitch here, chain three, three doubles, and that'll give you four. So we have three blocks now, one, two, three, for the next round you're going to have, next row, pardon me, you're going to have four, and then five, and then six, and then seven. So keep working until you have seven blocks in your row, and then we're going to talk about working even. Here we are at the end of row seven and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks in our row. So now that I have seven, I want to keep working on seven. So this next row is slightly different. We're going to begin the way that we did before. So we're going to chain six, one, two, three, four, five, 
six, make our new block by double crocheting in the fourth chain from hook. This guy and the two after. And then we're going to turn the work. A little split there, but we fixed it. And so at this point, point we're going to do just exactly what we did before. Chain three. Three double crochet around that chain three. And we're going to do this the same way that we did before. The only thing that's different about this particular row is the end. So I'm going to take this moment to ask all of you kind folks who do not watch until the end of the video to please like it and subscribe to the channel or leave me a comment or otherwise engage because it makes me so happy. And I will meet you at the end of this row to show you what's different. So remember earlier when I said when you work even you increase on one side and decrease on the other side? Well, here was my increase with my chain six. And I have seven blocks now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And those are all the blocks that I want. I don't want more than seven. So after I get this seventh one done, I'm going to join like we've been doing. Now I'm going to chain one and turn. And I'm going to slip stitch across these double crochets. That's one slip stitch two slip stitches, there's my third slip stitch, and then I'm going to put a slip stitch in between the third, well, in between the double crochet that I just worked in and that chain three. So there's my decrease using those slip stitches. Now I'm going to chain three, one, two, three, work my three doubles in here, one, two, three, and so I want seven blocks again. So I have this is one, then I'll have one here, two, three, four, five, six, and then I'm going to put my last one up here because this is where my increase side is. So from here on out, this is my decrease side and it's going straight up and down at the lower end of my uh, diagonal. And this is my increase side which goes straight up and down at the higher end of my diagonal. Um, let me get to here off camera and I want to talk about that side just a little bit. Now for this particular pattern, the next row we have a color change. And color changes are different here and here so I want to talk about both of them. On the increase side, if I want to change color for the last yarn over of the last stitch in the old color, I'm going to pull up a loop of the new color. So I'm just going to pull up that loop to finish that double. Now I'm going to chain six, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to cut this yarn because I don't want to float it. And I'm leaving nice long tails that I can weave in later. And now I'm just going to go ahead and live my life and work this row in the color change. Now if I have a color change on the other side, the uh, it, it's slightly different. So let me get to that point. So all I'm doing right now is working even, increasing on one side, decreasing on the other. So let me put a couple rows in of this color and then we're going to have a color change on the other side and I'm going to talk about that too. So following along with the pattern, which of course you can get on the blog, you'll see that there is a color change every three rows. Now the color change we did before was on the increase side, which was pretty easy, just change color and chain six. However, down here, I want to change color here, but my yarn's all the way over here. So what I want to do in this case, and again remember this is all written out on the blog, I'm going to go ahead and do my turn and I'm going to do my slip stitches in my old color. So one, two, three, 
and in that area between the last technical DC and the chain three. And now I'm going to go ahead and change my color. I'm going to leave a big yarn tail to work in later. I'm going to pull this through. I'm going to do my chain three. One, two, three. And then go ahead and start putting my doubles right there around the chain three like we've been doing. Now it's a little sloppy loosey goosey here, but I don't care because when I go back in with my tapestry needle and weave in my ends, I can tighten that up. So you're going to go ahead and follow the instructions, or if you're just following along with the video, we have our section that we did on camera at the beginning to get to the seven. And then we did a couple of rows in working even in that dark color. Then we have three of the light denim, three of that exciting peachy pink color, three of the light denim, and then two of the dark denim. And now we're going to do the decrease section. So what we want to do for the decreases is sort of square this off. Now before when we were working originally, we had an increase in every row. That was our increase section. Then we had our work even section, which was increase on the high side, decrease on the low side. Now we want to decrease on both sides. So every row moving forward is going to have fewer blocks. So we had seven for our next row. We want six and then five and then four and then three and then two and then one. So let's take a look at how that works. So in the case of this pattern, the last row that we did before the decrease section was on the high side. So instead of chaining six, like we've been doing, I'm going to chain one in turn. And now I'm going to do what we had been doing on the other side. I'm going to slip stitch in each of the double crochets. One, two, three. And in the area between the last technical double and the chain three, I'm going to chain three, two, three, put my doubles in here. And so now I want six blocks on this row, remember? So I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six. And then this was my decrease side. This is where I've already been doing decreases. So I'm going to do my decrease on this side the exact same way that I did for my work even row. I'm going to chain one, slip stitch across, and then move on from there. So that's all there is to this. You're going to decrease on each side. So you're going to have six, then five, then four, then three, then two, then one. Let's take a look and see what that looks like. So six, one, two, three, four, five, six, then five, one, two, three, four, five, then four, one, two, three, four, then three, then two, then one. So you're going to make four panels exactly the same. And I'm going to come back and show you how to sew them all together. So here I have my four panels. I did not weave in the ends down here at the tail because I'm going to use those to sew up the bottom. And this is the bottom of the bag. So I'm going to sew a seam here. And I'm going to sew a seam here. And then I will come back and show you the next seam. The thing you want to remember is you want the area where you started to be towards the center because there's one more row on that beginning dark denim piece than there is on the end one. So seam here, seam here, and set up exactly like that. Okay, my seams are sewn at the bottom. So I'm going to take each one of these areas and I'm going to line up my squares and I'm going to use my wonder clips. And line up square to square. And I'm going to do this on all four sides. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that's going to go there. Now I know I said in earlier that I uh, wove in my ends and now I'm thinking I should have left them to sew up with. 
anyway, I'm going to whip stitch that seam. Then I'm going to go here and do the same thing. So each of the four sections are going to get a new seam. All right, all of our seams are in. We have this nice squared off box bottom and we have our fun little pointy do's at the top. So the next thing I'm going to do is put a row of single crochet around the top edging just to keep things nice and sturdy. I'm going to make a single crochet three together at every valley and put three single crochets in every peak. That's going to keep that edging laying flat and then the last thing we're going to have to do is come up with some straps. So there's our single crochet edging that I mentioned earlier with our little single crochet three together in the valley and our three single crochet at the point. And then I made a strap that is five double crochet wide. I began and ended with a row of single crochet to give me something sturdy to sew onto. And I sewed it uh, at the base. So the bottom of the strap comes to the base of the first block. And my little point ends right here at the middle of the strap. And I sewed the straps on so they were crosswise. I was concerned that if I sewed one to the next, that that sort of boxy bottom would not look attractive. I apologize for banging the camera there. So I really, I like the space at the bottom of the bag, but I liked the straps better when they went to the point that was sort of catty corner or on the diagonal. So that's all there is to it. As always, please zip by the blog to get the full pattern like the video, subscribe to the channel, all those good things. Hit me up with a comment. Let me know what else you want to see. And thanks as always for watching.